Hi there, um, this is Lou here with you from Yarn to Street and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make these adorable, if I do say so myself, ice cream cone keychains. Now the keychain and the cute little kawaii face aspect of things are completely optional. Um, if you'd like to leave them just plain you are more than welcome to do so. Um, so let's have a look at the things that you're going to need for today's tutorial and then we will get cracking. Hello lovely humans, um, so we will just crack on. First off we are going to work on our ice cream, so we're going to want to pick up our double knit yarn um, in the colour that we've chosen. For mine I'm going to be using this sort of lovely custardy yellow colour. Um, this is inspired by a very delicious lemon meringue ice cream that I recently had, so that's, uh, that explains that. <laughs> Mine is inspired quite heavily by that, but obviously uh, you guys can pick whichever colour you like, depending on the flavour. Um, so what we're going to do to begin is we are going to create a magic loop. Um, this can also be known as a magic circle, and pretty much everybody does it in a different way. I'm going to show you the way that I find easiest, but if you think it's a little bit complicated, please, please feel free to um, have a look elsewhere and see if you can find one that makes a little bit more sense to you. Um, so what we're going to do to begin with is we are going to cross our yarn over our finger at a sort of um, 45 degree angle, sort of a uh, diagonal, and we're going to pull it down the back. We are then going to wrap it back up to create almost like a cross. Essentially what we're trying to do is create this cross across our finger. Then we're going to take our, our hook, we are going to insert it into the top right, we are going to roll it around the back and we are going to pull this piece through. So I'll show you that one more time. We are going to cross it over, round the back, cross it over to make this little kiss. We are going to insert our hook into the top right, carry it round the back and then we are going to grab this piece and we are going to pull it through. Now all we are going to do is very carefully remove our finger and we are going to take our working yarn, ignore the tail, we are going to take our working yarn and we are going to yarn over and pull through. That is just to kind of keep things in, in place. It does not count as a stitch. But what we are going to do now is we are going to put six stitches into this magic loop. We are going to go into this into the loop, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two. I'll show you that again. So through and yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. We are going to do that three more times so that we have a total of six stitches in our loop. So there's four, five, and six. So we should have two, four, six stitches all together. Now once we've got our six stitches, we want to close this gap. So we're going to give that a nice pull, a nice tight pull until that gap in the middle closes up. For our first round, we are going to be working two single crochet stitches into each of the six stitches all the way around. Now. I'll be working in American terminology for this, but any time that I use um, a stitch type name, I will put up um, almost like a translation for those of you who work in UK terms. Personally, I just find that US terms tend to make a little bit more sense for me, but if it's unclear at any point, please do get in touch and, and I'll make sure that I sort of clear things up for you. As a single crochet, we are going to insert our hook into that first stitch. We're going to yarn over and pull through. So you have then two loops on your hook, then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops. 
Now because we're wanting to increase in this round, we're going to put our hook straight back into that same stitch that we first worked into. We're going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through. So because we've got the two stitches in the one gap, we've now done an increase. So we're going to continue that all the way around until we get back to the beginning. So I'll show you again, we are going to put our hook through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Insert the hook into the same stitch again, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So we should have two stitches in every stitch all the way around. So if you carry on going all the way around and I'll meet you back here in a second. At this point we should have 12 stitches in our round all together. And for our next round, we're gonna carry on increasing the size of the, the shape, but what we're gonna do is, we're only gonna do an increase every other stitch. So we will do one single crochet into that first stitch, and then two single crochet into the next, followed by one, two, one, two, and so on, all the way around. So I'll just show you a couple. So in the first stitch, we're gonna do a single crochet, in the second stitch, we are going to increase, so we're going to do two single crochet. And again, one single crochet, and in the next stitch, one, two single crochet. So we're going to be doing a single crochet, followed by an increase, followed by a single crochet, followed by an increase, followed by a single crochet, followed by an increase, and so on, until we get back to the very beginning again. So now you should have a total of 18 stitches going all the way around. In this next round, we are only going to be increasing every third stitch. So we will have a single crochet, a single crochet, and then an increase of two single crochet. And then that pattern is going to be repeated all the way around to the start. In the first stitch, we will do one single crochet. In the second stitch, one single crochet. And then in the third stitch, we will do a two single crochet increase. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around until we get back to the start of the round. So you should now have 24 stitches on your hook. What we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be elongating this shape. So we're no longer gonna be doing any increases, we're just gonna to start to work down the way. And to do this, all we need to do is just work single crochets into each stitch all the way around. No increased stitches at all. It is literally just gonna be a case of working one stitch into each stitch. Now we're gonna do this for a total of six rounds so that we can make it nice and deep. And once you're done, meet me back here and we will get on with the lovely melty frilly part. Once you've finished your six rows all the way down, you should have something that looks roughly like this. Um, it's almost like a beanie for an action man or something. Um, I'm just going to trim this tail off so that it's not getting in the way. Um, so what we're going to be working on next is we're going to be working on the sort of frilly, melty part that comes out. Um, just for reference, I'll show you on this one here. Um, we're going to be working on this kind of little frilly bit here. Now this round is going to be worked not only in um, a different stitch but it's going to be worked into a different part of the previous round stitches. Instead of working directly into the stitch we're going to be working almost through it. We're only going to be working in this front loop just here. Now the reason for this is so that it, the stitches kind of kick out at a 90 degree angle rather than continuing on in the same vein as the rest. So before we start that round, we're gonna close this round off completely by doing a slip stitch and closing it off. So for those of you who aren't familiar with a slip stitch, you are gonna insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and then we're just going to pull that through there. And that will just kind of smooth out rather than giving you that kind of jump there. What we do first, since we're gonna be working in a longer stitch um, for this next round, we're gonna be working in half double crochet. 
um, we are going to need to chain two first. To do a half double crochet, you need to yarn over, you need to insert your hook. Now remember, we will only be working in this front loop. We aren't going all the way through, we're going up in between the stitch like this. We are going to yarn over and pull through, and then we are going to yarn over and pull through all three stitches on that loop. We are going to do that same stitch again into that same stitch. So you should end up with vaguely three stitches on your hook as this first uh, chain two will count as a stitch in this instance. So in the next stitch, we are going to work two half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and then a second into that same stitch. And then in the next, we are gonna work three half double crochet stitches, then two half double crochet stitches, then three, then two, then three, then two, and so on. And that'll create almost too many stitches, so you'll get this lovely kind of rippling effect where they're all trying to fit in at the same time. I will show you that another couple of times just so that it's a bit clearer. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into the front loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And for the next, we are gonna work two half double crochet stitches. So one, two, and for the next, we're gonna work three, one, two, three, and for the next, we will work two, so one, and we're going to continue that pattern all the way around until we get back to the very beginning. So I'll meet you back here in a second. Hello! So by this point you should have something that looks vaguely like this, um, almost like a little cute sun hat or something, um, with your lovely ripply bits going all the way around. And they might look a little bit unkempt for now, but you can edit those as you go along. To close this round, we are going to insert our hook into that first stitch from the beginning of the round. We are going to yarn over pull through and then pull through again. Next, we need to get ourselves a nice long tail and this is important because we need to make sure we have enough um, yarn remaining that we can stitch our um, ice cream top onto our cone. Now, we are gonna finish this off by just doing a yarn over, pulling through and then just whoop. That creates a lovely little knot and there we have our little ice cream buddy. Once we've closed off and everything, this is normally the best sort of time for you to put in some eyes. Now, I have some six millimeter black safety eyes. You can get them from various craft shops, um, hobby craft, your local yarn supplier, things like that, but I tend to just get mine in bulk um, from Amazon or eBay as they work out to be quite a bit cheaper. Obviously the eye placement is completely up to you. I tend to, to like having mine fairly low down because I think it looks cuter but you are more than welcome to put them wherever you like. Now I'm gonna It's best to to figure out the placement for your eyes before you commit to actually clipping them in. Mainly because of the fact that once they're squeezed in, um, it tends to sort of shift their position slightly and so it could throw you off when it comes to putting in the second one. Um, you should have something that looks a little bit like a... Um, it looks a little bit like Zoidberg at the moment, to be honest. Let's pop the backs on. They can be a bit fiddly. Um, 
but once your eyes are on nice and safe, we can move on to the cone. For mine, I'm going to be using two strands, um, just basically crocheted together. Um, this is because, and I'll show you on this little guy here, I feel like it gives a little bit more depth to the actual texture of the cone and to the sort of colours that you can see. I think it just looks a little bit nicer. Now obviously you don't have to do this, you can just use um, one colour, that's absolutely fine. Um, but if you do, I would suggest either doubling it up for this particular pattern or using a slightly thicker, maybe an Aran weight yarn. Um, or alternatively, you could just do an extra couple of rounds um, of increases if necessary because it will work up being slightly smaller when you're only using the one strand. So first of all, we are going to do the super duper magic loop again. So we are going to cross our yarn over our finger like so, cross it back over to make our lovely kiss. Then we are going to take our three millimeter hook. We are going to insert it in the top right. We are going to pull it around the back and we're going to grab that and pull it through. We are then going to gently remove our finger. We are going to take our working yarn and we are going to yarn over and pull through to secure our magic loop. As we did with our little ice cream buddy, um, we are going to put six stitches into this loop here. So I am going to stick my hook in the middle, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two. Through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So we're going to do that for four more stitches so that we end up with six. So there's number three, there's number four, there's number five, and number six. And as we did with our little ice cream buddy, we're just going to pull the tail end nice and tight and that will close up our little gap. If you would like to trim the tail at this point, you can do so, just so that it's not kind of dangling around getting in the way. We are going to do an increase round, but instead of doing an increase stitch in every stitch around like we did with the ice cream, we're only going to start off by increasing every other stitch. Now this will ensure that the shape grows less quickly and we'll get that lovely kind of smooth slow cone shape. We will do a single crochet in there and then in the next stitch we are going to do our increase so we will do two single crochet stitches in there and then in the next we will do one single crochet then an increase of one two single crochet and then one single crochet, and then an increase of one, two single crochet. And that takes us back to the start of the round. Now, between our increase rounds, we are going to do rounds of single crochet, just one in each stitch all the way around, because again, this will help give us this lovely slow um, increase in size that will give us our lovely cone rather than a big sort of dome shape that obviously won't work. Now at this point you should have two, four, six, eight, nine stitches in your round. So we're just going to now do nine single crochet, one in each stitch until we get back to the beginning. So the next round is an increase round again, so we are going to do an increase stitch every third stitch along and we're going to repeat this three times all the way around. So we're going to do one single crochet, one single crochet and then an increase of two single crochet and we're going to repeat that three times. So we'll do one single crochet, one single crochet and then one two single crochet to increase. And now we're going to do that two more times. Next we are going to do a round of single crochet again. So at this point you should have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve stitches in your round. So you're now going to do twelve single crochet until we get back to the beginning. For this next round, we are going to be increasing every fourth stitch. So we will do one, two, three stitches with just one single crochet, and then we will do two in the fourth. So 
one single crochet oops fiddly one single crochet one single crochet and then two single crochet in that fourth stitch along to increase and we're going to repeat that two more times the next round again we are going to work in single crochet all the way around and at this point you should have two four six eight 10, 12, 14, 15 stitches on your hook. Now we are going to do 15 single crochets. For our next round, we are only going to be increasing every fifth stitch and we are going to repeat that three times. So we will do four stitches of single crochet. One, two, three, four and then an increase so we'll do two in the same stitch I'm going to do that two more times next we will do another single crochet round so at this point you should have two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen stitches in your round so we will do eighteen single crochet And if you're still awake, we are going to do another increase round where we only increase every sixth stitch along, which gets repeated as usual three times. So we will do one single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet, four single crochet, and five single crochet. And then we will do two in the next for an increase. And we're gonna repeat that two more times. Now this is about big enough to pop our ice cream on top so we're going to close this off now with a slip stitch like we did with our ice cream so we are going to insert our hook into the next stitch along, yarn over, pull through and then pull it through that one there. Now we don't need a very long tail on this one because it will just get tucked inside so all we do at this point is yarn over and pull it through and then give that a nice tight pull so that it gets um, as smooth as it possibly can. So next we are going to move on to the stuffing and the assembly of our little ice cream buddy. So I am just going to use this um, toy stuffing. You can get this again, you can get this for most craft places um, or failing that you can always find it on the internet because let's face it you can find everything on the internet. Now you are going to pop it in in fairly small chunks just so that you make sure you can get it into every crevice that's what she said now you don't need to stuff it completely at this point you need to just kind of give it a light stuffing <laughs> stuffing you want it to just kind of um, help give you a little bit more rigidity to work with while you're sewing things on so the first thing we need to do is we need to get ourselves a decent yarn needle. Now, as you can see, mine has been very well loved. Um, these are important because they have a fairly blunted end, um, which is ideal for use with yarn because it doesn't split it. It doesn't catch on any of the fibers. It will just kind of push through um, without wrecking your yarn. And they also have a very large eye in order for you to be able to get your yarn through easily without having to lick it until it goes all gross and, and crusty and horrible on the end. We need to get back to the um, sort of outside ridge of our um, ice cream scoop before we start sewing it on. So the easiest way to do that is just to kind of um, push in from underneath to get that round, Ooh, bit of fluff and then just kind of pull it in towards the center. Now you shouldn't really see that. It's just so that we can get back to this part here and we can work closely with our cone. Insert it under your stitches like so. Again with this everybody has their own method for stitching parts of amigurumi together but this is just the one that I use and I hopefully it will help. 
Then you're going to go into your next stitch and pop it up through the top of your ice cream and give it a nice pull which should then hide your stitch um, just underneath there. So now we are going to move along our ice cream a little bit and we are going to pop our needle through and we're going to go back through that last stitch just to avoid a sort of zigzaggy bumpy situation going on. Now we're going to be carrying this on all the way around our little ice cream buddy until we've left ourselves with about a centimetre um, large opening. Now the reason um, that I tend to leave a little bit of an opening before I finish closing up is that I like to add a little bit of extra stuffing in right at the end just to kind of solidify it a little bit, make it feel a bit um, more weighty and, and not quite as soft and squidgy because it can lose its shape quite easily. Um, when you leave it squidgy. Okay, so now we've got to the sort of end part where we've got a little bit of a gap and we are just going to add in some more stuffing. Um, and this is just to give us a nice rigid shape because, you know, at the end of the day, there's nothing worse than a floppy ice cream. We're going to keep on stuffing that until we feel confident that it's as firm as we'd like it to be and then we are just going to close up those that last little bit so there you have the general makeup for your lovely little ice cream buddy to finish it off I normally actually don't do knots or anything like that I tend to just kind of stick my needle in somewhere near and all the way through Pull it through like that and then I do the same again and I kind of cross over and go to the other side and then I do the same again and then I'll just sort of come out somewhere else in the ice cream give it a little bit of a tug and then I will pull it a bit and give it a nice snip and that pretty much ensures that it's not going to go anywhere in order to add the pink cheeks I actually use makeup um, and I think a lot of people tend to go for either a blush like this one here or a, um, a pink eyeshadow or something of that um, ilk. Now this is Rocketeur by Benefit. It was part of a gift box that I got and it's actually worked out really, really useful. Um, the fact that my creations have better quality makeup than I do is slightly depressing, but what are you gonna do? I'm gonna take a small amount on my brush and then I am just going to gently kind of dot it underneath the eyes and slightly up around the outside and that just gives this lovely little blushy face if you want to add a key ring um, a key ring finding to it now is the time you can add that in any way you like um, if you have a look at these guys here I've basically just inserted the hoop through these little stitches in the top and then closed it off with some pliers and twisted it in so that the gap is inside the work. And there you have it, your very own Taste Buddy ice cream cone. I hope that this went well for you. I hope it was easy to follow. And if you do have any questions, please, please drop them in the comments below or send me a message through the Facebook page and I will try and help you out as much as I can. Um, this is my first video tutorial, so I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, and ideally, they'll improve <laughs> video by video. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon.